Yeah, and, and, and it, for me, it was an early decision that I was not going to censor myself mm. so that my message would become more palatable. Mm. I just couldn't do it. Mm. For me, it was going for the truth at all levels, right? And I just wasn't going to censor myself mm. to, you know, to be more acceptable. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, of course, it hurt me. It's harder, you know, for people that have more difficulty with these concepts, although it's finally slowly going away. I mean, last yeah. week there was, you know, a big news paper, I think it was the New York Times uh, uh, or Washington Post that had like a big and big title, like extraterrestrials are real and they might be walking amongst us, you know. And you had the Navy validation of the UFO. For that's you, right. As well, you've got patents being published. Exactly. Uh, as well. And, and, and you have modern astronomy that's realizing that there's billions and billions and billions of exoplanets, mm. right? Planets from other, in other solar system, where before they thought there was most likely very rare that stars had planets. Now they can't find stars that don't, don't have, have them, you know? <laughs> and, and they're finding many, many, many planets that are in the Golden Knot region where you know, it's it, it's think, warm enough and cold and a huge, enough. Huge component of that is through the advancement, the rapid advancements of technology. Mm -hmm. Scientists now have tools of self-validation mm -hmm. to ideas, concepts, and theories. Whereas mm -hmm. before, there was official channels. You mm -hmm. had the big telescopes, so they're the only ones you can see out far. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a lot easier to control, sensor, and neuter and kill yeah. uh, information. It's still. It's still very much there, though. I mean, oh, it's absolutely. very difficult to publish. If you publish with these kind of ideas, it's it's hard. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm still censored on many sites. You know, governmental sites where I should be able to place my papers. I'm censored there. I'm on blacklist. I'm I'm on blacklist at Wikipedia. You know, I I mean. Why I, millions of people follow exactly. my work? I, I can't get a Wikipedia page up, yeah. you know. I, I mean, it, and 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 the reasons that are given are not appropriate reasons, um, you know. And it's so, because you're on the money, we're we're seeing the exact same thing right now in the Bitcoin and crypto community. Oh, really? So it's been around for eleven years. Yeah, but the amount of misinformation, deliberate misinformation, very well orchestrated misinformation, um, to kill what the real promise of Bitcoin is. Because what Bitcoin truly can bring to the world is genuine light, a, a way of having true accountability, mm -hmm. a way of tracking human to human interactions, human to machine interactions and machine to machine interactions on a tape indefinitely and actually do a complete utter audit drill. It sounds like uh, the structure of the vacuum. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Hopefully, eventually, we can use the structure of the vacuum itself when we can access oh, it. Oh, 100% dude. Like, this, yeah. this, this, this is where my head's at. Right. This is why I coined it like space time, uh, yeah. time chain. Yeah. But through quantum computers. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, but because the few at the top who I believe genuinely saw the real purpose of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. it has been so viciously attacked and mm -hmm. neutered mm -hmm. uh, from within. And the original inventor of Bitcoin, who was under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto, didn't want to be in the public domain, right? Mm -hmm. But when the project was being taken very, very aggressively, of course, in fact, doing the very things that he was trying to fight against, mm -hmm. facilitating the illicit trade, trafficking, et cetera, is what the coin has basically, what the community really has become mm -hmm. is, is being utilized for these types of trade. Mm -hmm. But that's not the promise of the technology. Mm -hmm. So the inventor had to step back out where he got dragged out uh, of of hiding mm -hmm. because people just hunting him down, but they were dragged him out to then destroy his image. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, he's strong enough mm -hmm. uh, to take the abuse that's been handed to him. Yes, and smart enough. You have to, to be strong. Him, yeah, but smart enough to time around it and know how to fight back. Mm. But the way his name's Dr. Craig Wright, the way that he is still to this day so viciously attacked for what it is that he is, uh, is is doing. And I think any disruptive technology or any disruptive thinker mm -hmm. that has something that genuinely can serve the masses and 
provide a, a an equilibrium, a neutralizer to that that hierarchy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And allow us all to benefit from systems that allow us to 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 build and move forward the way it is that we choose to build and move forward. Mm -hmm. I think it's just an unfortunate thing. But fortunately, I actually do feel like with all this political change that's happening around the world, uh, I feel like we're getting to the end of that cycle of, of our society and human existence where we are going to step into a much more collaborative uh, right. journey, a much more collaborative hopefully. Uh, realm. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Hopefully we get there on time, oh. right? That's, that's the thing, right? Yeah, it's, that's the thing because yeah. the thing, you know, we're running out of resources. We're, we've thrown our environment in the you know, tailspin, you know, um, we've upset the natural order of things pretty well on the planet, you know, we're in trouble. And we have a short amount of time to get it together, realize that we're all on the same planet. We're all literally on the same boat going across the universe. And we better learn to collaborate yeah. and work together and open the doors to, you know, to like abundant ideas of, you know, it, it's remarkable, you know, we now know, for instance, that there is most likely thousands, millions, billions of different beings on different, you know, different societies on planets out there. There's 40 billion habitable planets, this is the last estimate, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, in our galaxy alone, that's in one galaxy. That's okay, insane. those are planets that are not too close to their star to be too hot or too far to be too cold yeah. that could host life as we know it, never mind if life can develop in hotter condition or... But that it's like gold, that golden yeah, like, that, state. Yeah, state. Yeah, that golden lock region. And it don't you know, like, so, so, and, and some of these society might have millions mm. of years, billions of years ahead of us. Mm. That, in cosmological time, that's nothing. Yeah. Right? Like, for, for our solar system to go one circle around the, the galactic, galactic arm that we're in is, is a, is a, is like 30 million years from equator to equator, 60 million years around just that's one turn right so you know you could have planets that have millions of uh, billions of years ahead of us what you know what does a computer look like in a million years right like what does it look like in a billion years right it, it probably doesn't have a mouse and a keyboard I it, it, it definitely, it definitely would does. it definitely it, would it's probably <laughs> just completely yeah, yeah. you know reading your yeah. brainwave frequency and it's done if and it's yeah it's doing exactly what you want it to do if you still have a brain you might not have a brain anymore you might be completely See, different, different, form, form, different form. Right. but this is a great way to then talk about a little bit of detail about these because we're talking about all the variances of different types of life forms mm -hmm. um uh, a lot of the say ancient knowledge that we have on this planet mm -hmm. We can definitely see the, the evidence of monoliths being built, which is quite clear to look like, okay, there's no way. Mm -hmm. Then we've even got, say, a lot of um, even biblical references, uh, Nephilim, uh, fallen angels. Right. And, like, there's, just, there's just so many pieces out there. Mm -hmm. But then you pick up, say, artifacts like this. So there's artifacts that were found, you know, that, that are very unusual. And there's more and more that are being found around the world in different countries. Um, this is just a few, you know, um, ones that were landed to me to test, you know, and the tests are showing that they're, they're, they're ancient. So let, me, uh, let me show you this one. So, so you got this one here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, a fractal image at the back. Yeah. So you have the, they look Mayan almost. Yes, they have, a, they have similarity to so Mayan. You see a face? Yeah, and I hope, I don't know if the camera is going to be able to get that. Maybe try and get a little closer look. Yeah. Um, but then you have basically the same face and the body inside the face. Yeah, inside the face, <laughs> you know, inside a capsule or something. Um, in the, you know, and in this case, I, I, you know, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a ceramic uh, piece. So we can test the ceramic with a very reliable method, which is thermal uh, luminescence. 
mm -hmm. um, because when it when they when they baked the piece, mm -hmm. um, you know, after that there is a constant emission of uh, luminescence or mm -hmm. photons that, and we can measure that and figure out when it was baked. And yeah. so, um, you know, this piece from you know standard laboratories were is given a, an age of approximately 2,800 years. Well, you know, 2,800 years old, why were they drawing people with like the big eyes and stuff? Because yeah. well, so this looks kind of like how your typical gray alien is depicted. Right, right. In, in modern era, people that have said to have seen extraterrestrials. And what's interesting is the face here is very different to the one that looks like it's being depicted mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and you can see his five star formation, head, uh, obviously shoulders, two arms, two legs. Right. So basically this is, this is very interesting. Um, but, uh, part of these pieces that are being found, it's another one. In this case, Clearly, you know. Oh wow! Okay, uh, so you you got you got UF, clearly UFOs there. Yeah, clearly got one inside a UFO. Yeah, in yeah, a space suit. Yeah, exactly in a space suit. Um, clearly, there's a planet back there that has an atmosphere. There's a comet with the ship in the tail of the comet. So how how old is this piece? Um, so we don't know because this piece is um, is a stone. A there's so there's. I can't do carbon dating and I can't do thermoluminescence because it's stone. But this piece was found with other pieces mm. that have, um, you know, this various things from instance, some of them have uh, inlays and we can test the glue because the glue has carbon in it uh, okay. and the glue gives us the age. The age vary widely in the pieces like this one is fairly young, although it's 2,800 years, which places it at the beginning of the Maya and Inca. But, um, the, you know, the, the oldest piece, the oldest piece. Um, so the oldest piece is this one that we've tested so far. Um, I don't have the piece here, mm -hmm. um, but um, this piece is, um, you know, and this is wow. standard. Uh, so this wow. piece <laughs> is, is a bust. It's fairly big. And you know the the, Dude, the age is so uh, old, and the, the material is so interesting. It's very hard to to um, this is to get an this accurate is carbon dated or how? No, this was um, uh, thermal uh, okay, luminescence okay. as well, yeah, which is actually more accurate. Isn't it? Which is can be more accurate, yeah, but it should be fairly accurate. Although in this case, it was very hard for them to get an accurate reading. They can get an estimated reading, mm. and the estimated reading is 15,400 years old. That's the oldest piece. 15, that's yeah. So that predates that last ice age, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And which, you know, the meltdown of the last ice age is what all these cultures around the world describe as the flood yeah. that ended the earlier civilization yeah. Yeah. that was on our planet. Yeah. So, you know, this this piece might actually be a rescued from, may have been rescued yeah. from a civilization that predated yeah, yeah. ours. And all this, you know, these are very good tests and they're very, you know, uh, accurate. So, and, and from the carbon dating we got, from other pieces we got a bunch of different values that a lot of them are in between 8,000 and 9,000 years old. Um, you know, so there's, there's all kinds of um, it seems like the information was kept alive, mm. you know, going from one generation to the other, um, you know, uh, across civilizations, um, you know, of this earlier civilization that had very advanced technology mm. that came from the stars. And yeah. this is, you know, it's in the Bible, it's in the Quran, it's in, it's in all of the different I mean, so many it's different. Like fallen angels fell from the heavens and bred with the women of men. That's right, exactly. Right. The, the sons of God, yeah. you know, came yeah. to the earth. It says that literally in the Bible. If they came to the earth, they weren't from the earth, <laughs> right? And they, and, and they had children with the women of men. So they weren't esoteric like, beings. They were able to have and, children. And if, 